Now, the Cayman originally went on sale worldwide in November of 2005 as an S model. Now we've moved on to the third generation, and along with a completely redeveloped platform, we've seen some technology updates similar to what has gone into the new 911 just in the last year. Our goal with the new Cayman was to not only improve product substance and specifications, but we also wanted to further differentiate it visually from the rest of the Porsche lineup. And we're gonna discuss some of these changes with you here today. We also wanted to make it more comfortable and even easier to use in your day-to-day -day lives. Let's start off with some of the design or platform changes that you can see in the new Cayman. The largest difference is the change in footprint. So we have a vehicle that's now a little bit lower, it's a little bit wider up front, and it's also a little bit longer. But the biggest difference has been the change in the footprint. The wheelbase itself has been extended by 60 millimeters, that's almost two and a half inches. And this is mainly due to the front wheel moving forward, the front axle coming forward, and the rear one staying in approximately the same area. So again, we're looking at an increase in 60 millimeters, or 2.4 inches, in the wheelbase. At the same time, the front track has increased uh, by almost 40 millimeters. It's 1.4 inches wider on the Cayman, and 1.6 inches wider on the Cayman S. And I said it's a little bit lower. The Cayman is 10 millimeters lower, and the Cayman S is 11 millimeters lower than the previous Cayman. So again, it's a little lower, it's a little bit longer, and a little wider up front. Now the 60 millimeter increase to the wheelbase, the 2.4 inch increase to the wheelbase, is offset by having a shorter overhang up front. So up front, the overhang is shortened by 26 millimeters, or about an inch. We're only seeing a one millimeter difference in the rear, so the net effect is despite a 2.4 inch increase to the wheelbase, we're looking at only a little over an inch longer to the total vehicle. Now this is not counting bumperettes, which we no longer have on the Cayman, just like we no longer have them on the Boxster. Let's take a look at some of the design changes on the front. You'll see that our, our front air intakes are now wider than they were before, a little bit larger for increased cooling. You can see we've retained the classic Cayman round uh, daytime driving light, it's now an LED. You can see some of the design lines that carry up through the front of the car around the vertical stack headlight. Bi-xenons are now standard on the S model. We saw the halogens on the Cayman itself. And we can take a look all the way up to the front of the vehicle. The base of the front part of the windshield has moved forward 3.9 inches. So it's moved forward quite a bit, and at the same time it's wrapped around further. So it gives a little more contoured front to the vehicle. Let's take a look at the side. One of my favorite lines on the new Cayman is the line that goes from the start from the fender across the top of the doors down to the rear shoulder. Makes it even more aggressive looking than before. We also have larger wheels. 18s are now standard on Cayman and 19s are standard on Cayman S. We have 20 inch Carrera Classic wheels on both of the Caymans on display up front here. So these are 20s on this vehicle here today. We moved the side mirrors down from the base of the A-pillar to on the doors. Again, what you've seen with 911 and Boxster and what we've done uh, from the start with Panamera. You can see that we have a smaller gap where the wheelhouse fitting is. So despite the larger wheels, we have larger tires too, so it's taking up more space. Look at the great lines that are, that are scalloped or indented into the doors leading to the air intakes. Again, giving more air to the engine. In fact, now both sides are air intakes for the engine, whereas previously on Boxster and Cayman it was just the driver's side that was a true air intake for the engine. We can continue uh, down the side of the vehicle and we can see that we have a longer side window and this is in part to the lower roof line which extends much further down than in the past. You can see that before we kind of came closer to here and then had a second line. Now we have one line that carries all the way to the rear of the vehicle. So despite the increase in size, the increase in footprint, the fact that it's a little bit longer and a little bit wider up front, we do have a lighter vehicle. In fact, the Cayman S is 66 pounds lighter than the previous Cayman S. So bigger, yet lighter at the same time. And a lot of this 
is due to an increase in the use of aluminum. In fact, the body shell is now 44% aluminum by weight. One of the largest differences that, where we can point this out is in the rear hatch. So the rear hatch now is all aluminum, and you can see that it's much longer than before and carries down here to the end. This piece alone, we've reduced the weight by more than 50% compared to the previous rear hatch. So it's just one of the examples of how we've saved weight in this vehicle. You'll recognize these taillights because we've used them on the new Boxster, but they have the nice uh, separation edge which comes down and provides a spoiler effect when the wing is tucked down. And of course the rear wing can lift up and tilt forward to offer uh, even greater reduction and lift at the rear axle. The new rear spoiler has a 40% greater surface area than the previous spoiler, making it even more effective. You, of course, will see we now have the Porsche logo type on the rear of the vehicle, along with the model type designation. This is the European vehicle, as you can see. If you take a look at the Boxster that's located over there, you have a great example of what the license plate frame surround will look like. And on the Cayman, uh, from launch, it will come painted in the body color. At the same time, there's been a few changes to the interior of the vehicle, again, very similar to what we've seen with 911 and Boxster. We now have the raised center console, a la the Carrera GT, which of course brings both the manual and PDK transmission closer to the steering wheel for further comfort in driving. We have the platinum gray interior on this vehicle, and we have agate gray with amber-orange inserts in that vehicle over there. There's a couple of two-tone leather interior packages that you can get on the Cayman, as well as with the Boxster. We have one of my favorites displayed right there. The exterior of this vehicle is agate gray metallic, a color we launched with Panamera Turbo S uh, not too long ago. It, of course, is also available on 911 and Boxster as well. Now, we move to the engines in the new Cayman, we see a few differences. Again, we're practicing similar techniques as what we've seen in the 911. The base Cayman, we've seen the dis uh, downsizing and the displacement of the engine. Previously, the Cayman had a 2.9 liter flat six. Now we have a 2.7 liter flat six. But despite the displacement, we do see an increase in horsepower. In fact, it's 10 horsepower greater than the previous Cayman, bringing us up to 275 horsepower. The Cayman S, retains the 3.4 liter flat six we had before, but we have an additional five horsepower. We're now up to 325 horsepower on the Cayman S. We've seen some updates to PDK, our seven speed double clutch transmission available as an option, and we still have a manual six speed as standard in both the Cayman and Cayman S. Now the result of increasing power and decreasing weight, of course gives us better performance figures. The Cayman now, with a manual transmission, hits 60 in 5.4 seconds. With the PDK, it's 5.3. And then PDK in conjunction with Sport Chrono Package and Launch Control brings you to 60 in 5.1 seconds. The Cayman S is even faster. It starts off at 4.7 seconds with a manual transmission for 0 to 60. If you have the PDK, it's 4.6 and the PDK with Sport Chrono and Launch Control, the Cayman S now hits 60 in 4.4 seconds, which is incredibly impressive and very exciting at the same time. Top speeds are about 10 miles an hour apart. You're looking at 175 miles an hour, track only, for the Cayman S, of course, and then 165 miles an hour with the manual transmission for the Cayman. So again, very, very quick, vehicles, very exciting. And we've seen some improvements in some of the technology that's applied to these vehicles. Again, like what we've seen in the 911 just in this last year. We now have auto start stop as standard with the vehicles. Whether you have PDK or a manual transmission, when you come up to a stop, like a red light, the engine can shut off if the proper parameters are met and you're not in sport mode. Then when you take your foot off the brake or if you engage the clutch, for the manual transmission, the engine starts right back up again. You can save up to 10% in fuel economy with auto start-stop alone. PDK now has a coasting function. 
So if your vehicle is equipped with PDK and you're driving along and you, you gently take your foot off of the gas pedal, you don't get into the brake, you just gently take your foot off the gas pedal, PDK will now decouple the engine from the transmission so you don't have any engine drag slowing down the momentum of the vehicle. Again, increases efficiency. And then as soon as you touch the brake or the gas pedal, recouples very quickly and you're on your way. We also have electromechanical power steering now in the Cayman. Again, like we've seen in the 911 and the Boxster. This no longer has a hydraulic steering system. There's no hydraulic pump. There's no hydraulic fluid. Saves some weight. It's a little more efficient. The hydraulic pump before operated at all points in time. And our studies have found that usually you're driving straight 90% of the time, so it's a waste of energy. Electromechanical power steering lets the electric motor assist the steering process only when you need it. At the same time, we still have a variable steering ratio, so we've retained that classic Porsche driving feel. We also have a vehicle elect electrical recuperation system, which basically tells the alternator to only recharge the battery when you're not accelerating heavily. This way, when you do want to get into it a little bit more, you have the full power supply of the engine devoted to you for performance. We also have a thermal management system, which heats up our transmission and our engine even more quickly than in the past so that you can achieve opera optimum operating temperature sooner and again, further increase efficiency. All of these technological advancement, advancements together lead us to an improvement in consumption by up to 16%, 16% more efficient than the previous Cayman on the new European drive cycle. In fact, our EPA ratings for the new Cayman with PDK, 32 miles per gallon on the interstate. So you're looking at an incredibly quick vehicle that has very good consumption values at the same time. This is, of course, helped out by the light, light weight of the vehicle. The Cayman weighs 2,888 pounds, and the Cayman S, 2,910 pounds. Very light, very quick, very efficient vehicles. We're very excited about them. They go on sale at the end of April of 2013 as of model year 2014, and the Cayman starts at 52,600, and the Cayman S at 63,800. At this point, we're going to take a short break.